Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Andrew and right behind me is the computer that we built in my previous video. But in this video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper and see how this computer is performing and what is the pros and cons. And these are the current specs of this computer. The CPU is AMD Ryzen 7 2700X. The RAM is 32GB DDR4 Kingston Fury Beast. The GPU is NVIDIA GTX 1616 Super, vertically mounted. We have two disks, one 512GB M2, which is on the motherboard, and one 2.5-inch, 1TB Samsung EVO 870 SSD. The motherboard is Gigabyte Aorus B450 Elite V2. And we have a liquid cooling for the CPU. So the question is, is this machine still good by today's standards? And is all of this still worth upgrading as I did in my previous video? Well, let's start. With the changes that I've done, first I back this machine in function again and I made it a little bit better than before. The speed and the power of this computer simply are still good for almost any daily use. I mean, starting from a basic thing such as watching videos or movies, 4K is totally playable, is great for music, great for web browsing, and etc. The CPU and the RAM are good enough for doing most of the freelancer's job or to study. So, for example, web research or anything similar that requests more browsers and many open tabs. So, all of that will go without any problem. As well, working with the multiple documents at the same time is going just fine. Actually, I have worked all of that on this computer before, and that was the main reason why I built it. I mean, I have worked all of that before I land this computer. But now, yes, it will serve for the same purpose again. The other thing is video editing and something similar. And I have edited videos before on this computer, even with the 16 gigs of RAM. But now, the things are even better. The video that you are watching right now, I edit on this machine. I never had any problems, like crushing or something while render. The 4K video editing is going just fine, except the render time is a little bit slower, especially when I use some effects or some more massive video clips. But anyway, this machine is still doing a great job here. The PC case from the outside is open, but this is not a bad thing, because I can easier access and clean the hardware. So I can use some brushes, napkins or vacuum cleaner to clean the case. The cons to the PC case are, I didn't put front USB ports, but this is for now only. So now when I need to transfer some files or use a card reader, I need to use the back USB ports. And let's move to gaming. Also, before I start, I want to say, in all games I used 2560 x1080 resolution and the display was set to 144Hz. And the first game on the list is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In this game I used mixed settings, but mostly high settings. And under the settings, the frame rate mostly is about 50. The Odyssey is also one of my favorite from this game series. The game is placed in ancient Greece. And as well, the game is connected with ancient Greek mythology. I like how the game is so unpredictable. The game's story depends on decisions that you are making in the game. Also, there is a lot to explore. The map is pretty large. And many, many other things. The other game on the list is Battlefield 2042. In this game, I used the mix settings also, mostly high, and here the frame rate is mostly about 40 to 45. I don't know about you, but at the beginning, I was a little bit disappointed from this game when it was released. I expect a little different things here and some single player campaign, but here we have a multiplayer only. Anyway, with some updates, this game started to be a bit better than before. The 
The other game on the list is Battlefield 3. Here I go with all ultra settings, and here the frame rate most is about 100. The Battlefield 3 is also one of my favorites from the Battlefield series. This is an older game released back in 2011, but the graphics are still great, and the audio effects are still great as well. Here especially I like the audio effects. The audio effects are far more realistic compared with many newer games, and freely I can say that this game was ahead of its time. The next game on the list is Black Mesa. The Black Mesa is a very nice remake from the original Half-Life. In this game, I like how everything is redone but in a very very nice way. The graphics are very good and as well I like the audio and the music effects during the gameplay. So anytime you should expect some surprise here. Also here I used high settings and the frame rate most is about 70 to 80, but very often goes over 100. Well, the next game is Crisis Remastered. The story here is the same as the original one from 2007, just we have a lot of improvements in graphics. And here I used medium settings, and under medium settings the frame rate is between 40 and 60. Also in Crisis there is a can it run Crisis settings, I mean under graphics, and these settings will max out everything. And no, the frame rate here is super low, and the game is unplayable. Actually, I can go with these settings, but I will need a much better GPU first. Now let's check a few more games, and the next game is Far Cry 6. Here we used a mix settings as well, medium and high, and under the settings the frame rate is about 50 to 60. The Far Cry 6 also has a pretty interesting story. You can choose to play with two different characters, the gameplay is super long, which I really like, and I need about 30 hours and something to pass the whole game. Or the police. They're just letting the military kill us? These are the police. La noche de la muerte. The next game is the GTA 5. So here I want to try something different and I set all to maximum just to see how everything will perform. And yes, 
I got a nice graphics, nice reflections, lights and all, but the frame rate is about 40. The other game that I test on this computer is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Here the settings are mixed as well. The settings are mostly set from medium to high. And here the frame rate mostly is between 45 and 50. But sometimes I get a little bit higher FPS. The Witcher 3 is also one of my favorite games. I like this game because the game story is super long and this game can be pretty tough. I mean, pretty hard to play. It depends from the settings. Well, the other game on the list is Shadows of the Tomb Raider. This is a well-known adventure game, with a nice story and a long gameplay. In this series, I like the puzzling of the game, also the puzzling depends on the level. It depends on the level, but sometimes can be challenging. Here I go almost with the max settings, and the frame rate mostly is between 70 and 80. And the last game on the list is Red Dead Redemption 2. In Red Dead 2, the settings are mixed. In Red Dead 2, the settings are mixed, mostly high, and here the frame rate is between 30 and 40. Also, this is a game with a longer game story. I still didn't finish the whole game, even I'm not to the half, but I can say this is a pretty good game to play. If we take a look at the frame rate while gaming, we will see that the CPU is pretty chill and the GPU is working to 100% or almost 100%. So that means here we have a bottleneck. Actually this GPU, I mean GTX 1660 Super, is too weak for this build. And if you want to make the ideal hardware, you will need something like RTX 2070 Super or RTX 360 Ti which currently is really out of my budget. And this is the box only. But anyway, overall, this is still a not bad computer and it's still very useful. Well, and this is all about this computer. This is not some super gaming computer or anything similar, but it's in a Verge computer. It's great to do some work, great for study, and it's good to play games and have some fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to do some repairs, upgrades and change something to better. Also, if you want to support my channel, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.